Oops, I skid through a popping of slushy cow dung. Hey, you Tibetans should get over here and clean up this illusion a little bit. I cross my, uh, the bridge and go down to the river. Oh, I need a fresh bath. Oh, the river is too polluted to bathe in. Bus stand junction. I get confused. I mean, I was just here two years ago. Uh, I shrink back into the shade of a chai shop. Oh, a friendly Indian guy, a uh, stranger, hands me a hash and tobacco three paper bomber joint. Yep. <laughs> she, mellow, curious guy. And, uh, puff, puff, puff. And I step into a bus into the agricultural maze of rural Uttar Pradesh. State. Uh, I get lost. Mm -hmm. Where is Sherpur? Hey, why is that fat farmer waving me off the bus? I mean, come on. What nerve. But, you know what? I could really use some rest in a comfortable <laughs> yeah, mango tree heaven. <laughs> You do. Uh, so uh, I go with the flow and I get myself picked up by a rich Sikh farmer. Oh, his name is Ram Singh and he wears an elaborate turban. Ooh. Um, he's bemused. Mm -hmm. He gives me the Maharaja. Marijuana treatment? <laughs> yeah. She hands me a bunch of pots. You know? uh, yeah, the ganja. Uh, chai biscuits at the uh, well, tube well, holding tank for the irrigation field. Just jump right in there. Yeah, splash. You know? Get my bath. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, submerge my weathered body. Well, Ram likes my vibe, and he invites me to stay forever. And he means it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we take a leisurely tour of the farm tools. And, uh... Hey, Ram, you got any mango trees around here? Ram's servant places before me a tale plate of my favorite North Indian meal, song, spinny, you know, aloo, potato, fresh water, makiki karoti, corn chapatis. Mm -hmm. Then it's uh, everybody onto the tractor for a night on the bazaar as we head into town. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ramakrishna takes me over to this old, <laughs> like 11th century, Shiva temple, huge banyan tree, Lord, looming over it. You know. And he introduces me to the Zadus, the Shiva worshipers. It's a Shiva temple, and these wandering Zadus have just wandered in from Banaras on the Ganges uh, to connect with the Vedic self within. These Zadus smoke chillums of hashish. Chillum, small conical handheld pot favored by yogis and Zadus and the hippies. Uh, yeah, brimming with strong hashish, huh? These wandering Zadus are strong, calm men. Yeah. And one extremely stoned Zadu walks right up to me and stares into my eyes 
Mm. And I see myself in him. I see God in him. God in fum human form. Uh, Ramakrishna explains to the wandering Zadus, they don't speak English, he speaks British colonial English, that I have just come from Neem Karoli Baba's temple, which like blows them away. Neem Karoli Baba? Well, he got his name because they wouldn't let him uh, travel free on uh, the train. So he put his chimtas, which are tongs to take coals out of a yogi's fire. They use them also for a musical instrument. They clap the chimtas together. Uh, he did, yeah, okay. Uh, can't go on the train. He, 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 he put his chimtas in the ground. Train couldn't move. That's how he got his reputation. He's that powerful. Hey, Baba, you want a ride? No worries. Hmm. Abandoned tree. Monkeys chattering in there. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> so they say to me, uh, Sri Earthman. Sri is an honoring title. Like, most reverend or something. Shri, Earthman, uh, Chillum, Ganja, Ashish. You should, yeah. Doesn't take much sign language. <laughs> oh, you got some real good ash there. Yeah, sure. Oh, and, uh, oh, there's a snake charmer. This is like a remote Indian village. Cows wandering around, kids, goats, sheep, uh, <laughs> Something like 14th century medieval India vibration. Well, the snake charmer he gets his cobra up out of the basket, and uh, Rama sweeps his hand at the bazaar shops and says, "Hey, anything you want, got you covered." Mm. Uh, we chant. And play flutes, cymbals, a harmonium, <laughs> fire chimtas, in the centuries old faded ochre Shiva temple. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> Monkeys chattering in that banyan tree. Stars come out, countless intoxicating chillums. This Ananda. Mm. Well, I finally come down from the trip in Rama's mansion in town as he pours me an expensive French cognac. Oh. Seems Rama's lonely and alcoholic. Mm -hmm. After all, sad, long conversation. I lock myself inside a guest room. Hmm. Light a candle and incense. Cross my legs into meditation position and stare into the smoke and flame. Om. And deeply ponder. Why the scarcity of loving kindness and compassion on earth? You know. Om Namah Shivaya. Bom Shankar. Many dusty borders have I walked across. Always awkward instances of man separating another man. Demon fences disfiguring our one terra earth land. <sighs> when what planet Earth needs is climate change insurance, a one world global fund uh, to uh, heal in starvation scenes. And uh, what about an earthquake? What about a typhoon? A hurricane? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We need a 
emergency fund as a planet. You know, what's the deal? 200 self-righteous nations, uh, each claiming national sovereignty, does not work. Uh, because uh, humanity is truly one organism Earthy, it's so clear to me, but a lot of people don't get where I'm coming from on this. Uh, I need a really simple analogy that everybody can just immediately... Thank you. Imagine um, <laughs> your brain giving your body 200 different... Like the 200 nations. Signals. At the same time, different signals. Uh, <clears throat> like, man, you wouldn't be able to walk across the room. Uh-uh. And that's what, you know, humanity is right now. It's an un We are an uncoordinated jerk <laughs> on a global level. Uncoordinated jerk. Okay. Yeah, this way and that. Contradictory. Lurching. <laughs> Wasting vital energy, uh, preparing war with ourselves. Oh, okay, uh, let's see, a simple uh, analogy. Imagine pumping weights to build up the muscle in your right arm. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you could slug yourself in the face. Why? Your left arm attacked yourself? Greed, uh, greed blinded. <laughs> you know, squandering of mankind's dwindling natural resources. Absurd. And deeply disheartening. Mm. Nation-state paradigm. Yeah, it was better than what had come before it, you know, endless tribal warfare. Better. But um, what's happened is that the nations have outgrown their usefulness. Uh, so that now the countries um, are a drag on the natural evolution of our world-centric species. Mm-hmm. And a drag on the natural planet. Poor Earth, huh? Mm. Mm. What mankind needs is one centralized Earth government for the planetary big things like climate refugees, you know, political refugees, uh, famine relief, hurricane recovery funds. Uh, uh, asteroid impactions. Yeah. The Earth people need to reach critical mass. It's just so few of us right now. Uh, reach our critical mass enough that we can impose a dominating harmony on the nations, on the lower realms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To prevent nasty regional wars between nations and uh, conflicts that kill millions of people on a yearly basis. I mean, Syria, half a million people just in that area. Mm. And Besides the Earth government, the big thing uh, uh, center, we need many small, many ethnic groupings for the romantic, precious cultural aspects of life. The problem is the nations, they've over homogenized <laughs> the delightful ethnic diversities, you know? 
monster nations gone too far. Wow. So what to do?